How's it going everyone? With the hype around Assassin's Creed Mirage coming up, I figured I would actually make a video regarding a very underrated character. His name is Malik and he's in Assassin's Creed 1. He, this I would consider one of the purest forms of storytelling and in a way Malik also shows you how much Altair has developed. I think he's not only the most underrated character in Assassin's Creed, but he helps Altair grow so much and I'd like to showcase this with you guys. Enjoy the video. Wait! There must be another way. This one need not die. <laughs> An excellent kill. Fortune favors your blade. Not fortune, skill. Watch a while longer and you might learn something. Indeed. He'll teach you how to disregard everything the Masters taught us. And how would you have done it? I would not have drawn attention to us. I would not have taken the life of an innocent. What I would have done is follow the creed. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Understand these words. It matters not how we complete our task, only that it's done. But this is not the way of- My way is better. I will scout ahead. Try not to dishonor us further. So Altair comes off really arrogant, goes in, kills an innocent. Now obviously it's one of the tenets that the Creed do not kill the innocents. It's one of their main tenets and Altair here decided to break it. He's got a lot of ego. Now Malik is obviously trying to help Altair see the truth behind his errors. Instead of just being quiet and letting it happen, he tells him like this is not okay, you're not supposed to do this. And Malik's brother is there. Especially Malik, uh, Malik's brother is a little bit lower rank than Altair and Malik themselves. So he wants to at least show him the right path and the right way. And Altair just completely disregards all that. Tells him this is, you know, this is not the way. And tells him my way is better. So he comes off really arrogant, really egotistical. And this is basically the start of their friendship. It's a lot of hostility between them already. But it gets worse. Right! Someone's coming! I want us through this gate before sunrise. The sooner we possess it, the sooner we can turn our attention to those jackals at Masiaf. Robert de Sable, his life is mine. No. We were asked to retrieve the treasure and deal with Robert only if necessary. He stands between us and it. I'd say it's necessary. Discretion, Altair! You mean cowardice. That man is our greatest enemy. And here we have a chance to be rid of him. You have already broken two tenets of our creed. Now you would break the third. Do not compromise the Brotherhood. I am your superior, in both title and ability. You should know better than to question me. Hold, Templars! You are not the only ones with business here. Ah. Well, this explains my missing man. And what is it you want? Blood. You know not the things in which you meddle, assassin. I spare you only that you may return to your master and deliver a message. The Holy Land is lost to him and his. He should flee now while he has the chance. Stay, and all of you will die. Now this is honestly one of my favorite cutscenes ever in Assassin's Creed. It's right at the start. It's so cinematic. It shows you just how cocky Altair is. They're trying to make him up to be this egotistical assassin that basically he told Malik straight up, I'm better than you in ability. I'm better than you in skill. You shouldn't be even talking to me about this decision. I know what I'm doing. And he broke yet another tenant of the creed, which is to hide in plain sight. Instead, he just chose to walk up and pretty much expose himself when this was this isn't the way of the creed. So Malik here, he's pretty upset with him. And now they trapped him. Basically, Altair unintentionally trapped them both in there against all those Templars because he chose to be cocky. He was like, oh, well, I can just kill, kill the Templar and take the piece of Eden. He thought he could do both things. Which, in theory, is a great move to get rid of the, you know, the biggest enemy as well as take the Peace of Eden. But there was no plan. 
He was reckless, he was arrogant, he thought, well, I'm a high-ranking assassin, I can do this. And that's what leads up to such an incredible friendship between Malik and Altair. So, I'll let you all see what happens next. Altair. Master. Come forward. Tell me of your mission. I trust you have recovered the Templar's treasure. There was some trouble, Master. Robert de Sable was not alone. When does our work ever go as expected? It's our ability to adapt that makes us who we are. This time it was not enough. What do you mean? I have failed you. The treasure? Lost to us. And Robert? Escaped. I send you, my best man, to complete a mission more important than any that has come before. And you return to me with nothing but apologies and excuses. I did. Do not speak! Not another word! This is not what I expected. We'll need to mount another force. I swear to you I'll find him. I'll go in. No! You'll do nothing. You've done enough. Where are Malik and Kadar? Dead. No! Not dead. Malik? I still live at least. And your brother? Gone. Because of you! Robert threw me from the roof. There was no way back. Nothing I could do. Because you would not heed my warning! All of this could have been avoided! And my brother... My brother would still be alive! Your arrogance nearly cost us victory today. Nearly? I've watched your favorite fail to find. Here. Take it. Though it seems I've returned with more than just their treasure. I think one of my favorite things about this scene is the fact that Malik actually survived the battle against the Templars. He's managed to survive. And so now he's going to be revealing what Altair would have done. Now Altair might not have spilled the entire truth about what happened. He just said, yep, Malik and Qadar are dead. But since Malik showed up, he revealed the full information of what went down. And when you get another person's perspective who was dicked over, it is going to make Altair look bad. And I would like to defend Altair on one thing personally. His plan wasn't bad. To kill the Templar, the greatest enemy, and take the Peace of Eden would have been massive. But there just needed to be a plan. There was no plan. And because there was no plan, this is, what, this is the result. Altair is very, very strong. He's very good in combat, but his arrogance led him to basically have his brother Qadr, uh, Qadr killed and Malik almost killed. His arm is completely gone. In fact, later he had to chop it off because it was damaged beyond repair. Uh, he could not fix his arm. And I would like you guys to see in these next following clips how much, how much these two, how their conversations went as time passed. And I'll let you just watch it through. I'll, I won't say anything and just enjoy it because I think personally it is absolutely masterpiece storytelling. These two, and that's why I consider Malik to be extremely underrated by the way. I think he should have had way more screen time, way more dialogue. He is fantastic of a character. And many years later, I think it's worth giving some love to Malik. And in the end, I will tell you what happened to him after AC1. So enjoy. Safety and peace, Malik. Your presence here deprives me of both. <laughs> what do you want? Al Muallam has asked. Ask that you perform some menial task in an effort to redeem yourself. So be out with it. Tell me what you can about the one they call Talal. It is your duty to locate and assassinate the man, Altair, not mine. You'd do well to assist me. His death benefits the entire land. Do you deny his death benefits you as well? Such things do not concern you. Your actions very much concern me. Then don't help me. I'll find him myself. <sighs> wait, wait. It won't do having you stumble about the city like a blind man. Better you know where to begin your search. 
I'm listening. I can think of three places south of here in the markets that line the border between the Muslim and Jewish districts. To the north near the mosque of this district and east in front of St. Anne's Church, close to the Babariha Gate. Is that everything? It's enough to get you started and more than you deserve. Malik. Come to waste more of my time? I found Talal. I'm ready to begin my mission. That is for me to decide. Very well. Here's what I know. He traffics in human lives, kidnapping Jerusalem citizens and selling them into slavery. His base is a warehouse located inside the Barbican, north of here. As we speak, he prepares a caravan for travel. I'll strike while he's inspecting his stock. If I can avoid his men, Talal himself should prove little challenge. Little challenge? Listen to you. Such arrogance. Are we finished? Are you satisfied with what I've learned? No. But it will have to do. Rest, prepare, cry in the corner. What did he say? Do whatever it is you do before a mission. Only make sure you do it quietly. Altair! Wonderful to see you return to us! And how fared the mission? The deed is done. Talal is dead. Oh, I know, I know. In fact, the entire city knows! Have you forgotten the meaning of subtlety? A skilled assassin ensures his work is noticed by the many. No! A skilled assassin maintains control of his environment. We can argue the details all you'd like, Malik. But the fact remains, I've accomplished the task set to me by Al Mualim. Go then. Return to the old man. Let us see with whom he sides. You and I are on the same side, Malik. Safety and peace, Malik. Where that the city was possessed of either. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Why do you trouble me today? Al Mualim has marked Majduddin for death. What can you tell me about him? Salahuddin's absence has left the city without a proper leader, and Majduddin has appointed himself to play the part. Fear and intimidation get him what he wants. He has no true claim to the position. That ends today. You speak too readily. This is not some slaver we're discussing. He rules Jerusalem and is well protected because of it. I suggest you plan your attack carefully. Get to better know your prey. With your help, I will. Where would you have me begin my search? What's this? You're actually asking for my assistance instead of demanding it. I'm impressed. Be out with it. As you wish. Here's where I would look. First, to the southwest near the mosque. After that, head south of here. There are two locations that might interest you. The southernmost church is one, the other is in the streets, near a synagogue. Thank you for your help, Dai. Don't foul this, Altair. What news, novice? Hey, that's fucked up. I am not a novice. A man's skill is defined by his actions, not the markings on his robe. We can trade barbs or do Al Muallim's work. It's your decision. Then be out with it. Jerusalem's regent Mejduddin is holding a public execution not far from here. It's sure to be well guarded, but it's nothing I can't handle. I know what to do. And that is why you remain a novice in my eyes. You cannot know anything. Only suspect. You must expect to be wrong. To have overlooked something. Anticipate, Altair. How many times must I remind you of this? True, and that's true. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. I mean, that's true. As you wish. Are we done? Not quite. There is one more thing. One of the men to be executed is our brother. One of us. Al Mulim wishes for him to be saved. Do not worry about the actual rescue. My men will take care of that. But you must ensure Majduddin does not take his life. I won't give him the chance. So I hope. Jerusalem needs a new ruler. So I have heard. What's this? No words of wisdom for me? Surely I have failed in some spectacular fashion. You performed as an assassin should. No more, no less. That you expect praise for merely doing as told, however, troubles me. It's 
seems everything I do troubles you. Reflect on that. But do so on your way back to Masyaf. Your work here is done. And so, our hero Altair rides back to Masyaf to inform Al Muallim of his assassination. But he couldn't stop thinking about Malik, about Qadr, about the time he was in Solomon's temple with them, and the mistake that costed Qadr his life. He feels like Malik could never forgive him for what he's done. And Altair has accepted that. He knows he cannot please Malik, not after what he's done. Altair knows that Malik despises him, and he's begun to accept the fact that they will never be friends again. This is the end between them, but he knows that he must focus on his assassination contracts, for they are the most important thing right now. To heal the Holy Land. Safety and peace, Altair. Upon you as well, brother. Seems fate has a funny way with things. So it's true then. Robert de Sable is in Jerusalem. I've seen the knights myself. Only misfortune follows that man. If he's here, it's because he intends ill. I won't give him the chance to act. Do not let vengeance cloud your thoughts, brother. We both know no good can come of that. I have not forgotten. You have nothing to fear. I do not seek revenge, but knowledge. Truly, you are not the man I once knew. My work has taught me many things revealed secrets to me, but there are still pieces of this puzzle I do not possess. What do you mean? All the men I've laid to rest have worked together, united by this man. Robert has designs upon the land, this much I know for certain, but how and why, when and where, these things remain out of reach. Crusaders and Saracens working together? They are none of these things, but something else. Templars. The Templars are a part of the Crusader army. Or so they'd like King Richard to believe. No, their only allegiance is to Robert de Sable and some mad idea that they will stop the war. You spin a strange tale. You have no idea, Malik. But tell me where they've been seen. I should be after him before he slips away. Three places I can say for certain. West of here, near both a guard tower and a hospital. And to the southwest, at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. See what you can learn. I will do the same. I'll be quick as I can. Stay safe, my friend. You've the scent of success about you, brother. I've learned much about our enemy. Share your knowledge, then. Let us see what can be done with it. Robert and his Templars walk the city. They've come to pay their respects to Mejduddin. They'll attend his funeral, which means so will I. What is this that Templars would attend his funeral? I have yet to divine their true intentions, though I'll have a confession in time. The citizens themselves are divided. Many call for their lives. Still others insist that they are here to parley, to make peace. Peace? I told you. The others I've slain have said as much to me. That would make them our allies. And yet we killed them. Make no mistake, we are nothing like these men. Though their goal sounds noble, the means by which they'd achieve it are not. At least, that's what Al-Mu'allam told me. So what is your plan? I'll attend the funeral and confront Robert. The sooner the better. Fortune favor your blade, brother. Malik, before I go, there's something I should say. Be out with it. I've been a fool. Normally I'd make no argument, but what is this? What are you talking about? All this time, I never told you I was sorry. Too damn proud. You lost your arm because of me. Lost Qadr. You had every right to be angry. I do not accept your apology. I understand. No. You don't. I do not accept your apology because you are not the same man who went with me into Solomon's temple. And so you have nothing to apologize for. Malik. Perhaps if I had not been so envious of you, I would not have been so careless myself. I'm just as much to blame. Don't say such things. We are one. As we share the glory of our victories, so too should we share the pain of our defeat. In this way, we grow closer. We grow stronger. Thank you, brother. Rest if you need to, Altair, that you might be ready for what lies ahead. It was a trap. I had heard the funeral turn to chaos. What happened? Robert de Sable was never here. 
He sent another in his stead. He was expecting me. You must go to Al Mualim. There's no time. She told me where he's gone, what he plans. If I return to Masyaf, he might succeed. And then, I fear we'll be destroyed. We have killed most of his men. He cannot hope to mount a proper attack. Wait, did you say she? I would see your eyes before you die. I sense you expected someone else. What sorcery is this? <laughs> Yes, it was a woman. Strange, I know. But that's for another time. For now we must focus on Robert. We may have thinned his ranks, but the man is clever. He goes to plead his case to Richard and Salah ad to unite them against the common enemy. Against us. Surely you are mistaken. This makes no sense. These two men would never... Oh, but they would. And we have ourselves to blame. The men I've killed. Men on both sides of the conflict. Men important to both leaders. Robert's plan may be ambitious, but it makes sense. And it could work. Look, brother. Things have changed. You must return to Masyaf. We cannot act without our master's permission. It could compromise the Brotherhood. I thought... I thought you had learned this. Stop hiding behind words, Malik. You wield the Creed and its tenants like some shield. He's keeping things from us. Important things. You were the one told me we could never know anything, only suspect. Well, I suspect this business with the Templars goes deeper. When I'm done with Robert, I will ride from Asyaf that we may have answers. But perhaps you could go now. I cannot leave the city. Then walk amongst its people. Seek out those who served the ones I slew. Learn what you can. You call yourself perceptive. Perhaps you'll see something I could not. I don't know. I must think on this. Do as you must, my friend. But it's time I ride for Arsuf. Every moment I delay, our enemy gets one step ahead of me. Be careful, brother. I will be. I promise. Altair! Up here! You picked a fine time to arrive. So it seems. Guard yourself well, friend. Al Mualim has betrayed us. Yes. Betrayed this Templar allies as well. How do you know? After we spoke, I returned to the ruins beneath Solomon's temple. Robert had kept a journal, filled its pages with revelations. What I read there broke my heart. But it also opened my eyes. You were right, Altair. All along our master has used us. We were not meant to save the Holy Land, but deliver it to him. He must be stopped. Be careful, Malik. What he's done to the others, he'll do to us given the chance. You must stay far from him. What would you propose? My blade arm is still strong and my men remain my own. It would be a mistake not to use us. Distract these thralls then. Assault the fortress from behind. If you can draw their attention away from me, I might reach Al Mualim. I will do as you ask, Dai. The men we face. Their minds are not their own. If you can avoid killing them. Yes. Though he has betrayed the tenets of the Creed, it does not mean we must as well. I'll do what I can. It's all I ask. Safety and peace, my friend. Your presence here will deliver us both. And that's the story of Malik and Altair, and pretty much the last time we actually see Malik in Assassin's Creed 1. Um, he later shows up in a, in a book, I believe, and unfortunately... Uh, he was killed by Abbas's men. Abbas, we know him from Assassin's Creed Revelations in Altair's memories. Um, he was beheaded, essentially. Um, what happened was, I'll show the wiki of how Malik died and look it over with you guys. Following Al Mualim's defeat and Altair's ascension to mentor, Malik became Altair's close colleague and right hand man. Together, the two worked to design a new assassination techniques. Design new assassination techniques, sorry, which Altair recorded in his, per in his personal journal. Altair also began to delve into the secrets of the Apple of Eden, studying it for days at a time. Both Malik and Altair's wife, Maria Thorpe, were uncomfortable with the Apple's effects on Altair, as it distracted him from food and rest. They insisted that Altair lock it away, but their advice was ultimately ignored. This is what Malik had to say about leading the order. 
I should have anticipated Abbas's plans. For years after your departure, he worked to undermine me. I had no idea he managed to command such support. Malik talking about Abbas's actions to Altair. In 1217, Altair, Maria, and their son Darim left from Mongolia to deal with the rising threat of Genghis Khan, and Malik was left in temporary control of the order. Altair and Maria's second son, Sef, also remained behind to, to care for his young children and worked with Malik to govern the order. In 1255, Abbas Sufyan, another high-ranking assassin, staged a coup d'etat in which he had Sef killed and the murder weapon placed in Malik's bed, so essentially he framed Malik. In addition, one of Abbas's spies claimed to have heard Malik and Sef arguing about who would retain control of the order upon Altair's return. Malik was thus framed for Sef's murder and imprisoned in the dungeons below Masyaf. And here is his death. It would not have happened to a stronger leader, Malik blaming himself for letting Abbas take control. When Altair and his family returned in 1228, Abbas attempted to trick them into believing that Malik had murdered Seth. Altair, distraught at his son's death, was nearly convinced of Malik's treason. Maria, however, admonished Altair for believing in Abbas more than Malik, prompting him to reconsider. He then infiltrated Masyaf's prison, finding Malik in extremely poor condition and brought him to their quarters. As Maria tended to Malik, he revealed how Abbas had worked to undermine him for many years and ultimately framed him for Seth's murder. He lamented that he had not been a better leader. He had not been a better leader and that this would not have happened to Altair. After waiting for Malik to fall asleep, Altair and Maria left to speak with Abbas. In their absence, Abbas's spy Swami killed and beheaded Malik, then delivered the severed head to Abbas in a burlap sack. Abbas presented it to Altair and Maria when they confronted him, seeking to indict them for treason. And obviously, this all leads to the events of Assassin's Creed Revelations, where we there's the back and forth memories of Altair, and eventually we kill Abbas as playing as Altair using the hidden gun. So this story, uh, it's so great. I would have loved to see Malik in Assassin's Creed Revelation. With Altair's memories, it would have been amazing to see it because I really think Malik is one of the most underrated characters in the entire AC universe. And he plays such a pivotal, big role for Altair's growth. Um, and he ends up even becoming a mentor. I think Malik is easily one of the greatest characters. And I just wanted to make this video to show some appreciation and love for just how much of an impact he had on Altair as a character. That's pretty much it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will hopefully see you guys in Assassin's Creed Mirage for October 5. Take care of yourselves, and remember, nothing is true, and everything is permitted. Thank you very much.